right? No. And also you and I learned a new trick, which was that we realized that this was a long duration asset and need to have a longer time horizon than was traditionally macro. Yeah. And we both yeah. had to learn that trick. You know, you have to learn it. It's hard, but you learn it and you learn as you're doing now is if you've got a long duration, you should be buying in the sell-offs and not selling. Alrighty, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyberX video banger. In today's video, I have some clips from some systemically important people, large organizations, and major banks and financial institutions showing you guys some industry-leading perspectives behind the scenes that the mainstream media is never going to show you all, keeping you all in the loop, forward-looking, and optimistic in this digital asset ecosystem. So you're not going to want to miss out on this video breakdown. We're going to also get into some documents that I've shared on the X, solidifying the perspective that this digital asset landscape and cryptocurrencies are not going anywhere. They are here to stay. If you all enjoy these video breakdowns, first off, do us a favor, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you all so much for returning. We do appreciate the love and the support. One thing that I'd like to say is I see a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market as of right now. Keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this video breakdown, getting into detail with these perspectives from some of these large organizations and some of these people that are heavily involved in this space, because what we're seeing right now is the optimism and risk assets starting to fade. I want you guys to keep in mind the long-term perspective. As you all heard, Raul Paul, at the very beginning of this video breakdown, he, in particular, is buying the dips every single time that we see a sell-off in the digital asset space. I take that same exact approach. I see the market declines, whether it's we dip further to the downside or we just consolidate where we're currently at now with this most recent market decline. I look at that as a buying opportunity because here at CyberX, based off of all the research that we've done, we know that financial institutions are doing the same exact thing. And in today's video breakdown, I'm going to attempt to get that point across and show you all information that the mainstream is not going to bring to light. So the first video clip that I'm going to share with you all is from one of the first Swiss banks that is offering cryptocurrency to their clients. And I want you to take a second and listen to what the panelist says on how this shows to the entire industry and the rest of the financial institutions the importance of digital assets. Anyway. As I mentioned, uh, last year in October, Sugar Cantona Bank has announced a strategic partnership with, uh, with Signum um, to become one of the first Swiss Cantona banks to offer digital assets and cryptocurrency services to their clients. Um, and we were all cheering in the Crypto Value Association office uh, and among uh, our ecosystem about the news. Every single time something like this comes out, we are very excited because this signals to us um, that um, the rest of the ecosystem and industry realizes the importance of digital assets. Um, the rest of the ecosystem and industry realizes the importance of digital assets. Now in the market, as of time of recording this video, I'm seeing fear amongst manual retail investors with this most recent market decline due to the upbeat economic data, higher inflationary readings and stronger dollar that we've seen over the past consecutive couple of trading days weigh on the narrative surrounding the rate cuts, which we know has been fueling risk assets all across the board, primarily started back in late 2023 in October. And then also we're seeing some uh, uncertainty and fear surrounding some potential pending lawsuits that could potentially negatively affect the market. For example, the SEC warning Uniswap labs of a potential lawsuit obviously, of course, has driven fear amongst manual retail investors. Well, I want you all to take a second and listen to these financial institutions going all the way back to 2022. Now, obviously, of course, these videos are more recent. The vast majority of these videos that I'm sharing with you all are from 2023 and beyond. But take a second and listen to what they say as to how they saw the FTX collapse as an opportunity to get into this digital asset space at a discount when valuations were low. Uh, what about the timing? Why now? Why not earlier or why not later? Did yeah, I mean, I mean... We kind of started like in, in the aftermath of the FTX crash, right, where the market was severely disrupted and even like the pessimists, they were thinking like the crypto investing time is over. And we, on the contrary, we saw it as an opportunity because it's severely disrupted and even like the pessimists, they were thinking like the crypto 
investing time is over. And we, on the contrary, we saw it as an opportunity because stability disrupted. And even like the pessimists, they were thinking like the crypto investing time is over. And we, on the contrary, we saw it as an opportunity because we sensed like our clients are still looking for investment opportunities. They were just afraid. Like Absolutely. So, so uh, the key point is also you're making the FTX disaster and the other disasters we've seen have not led you and your colleagues to close down crypto projects and so on. Yeah. Absolutely not. Rethinking it and just uh, focusing on the real necess and necessary points, but not stopping it, not at all. Right. So now that you've heard that, again, that's not coming from my mouth. That's not me telling you all that these financial institutions saw those discounted prices as an opportunity and the FTX collapse as an opportunity to get in when valuations are low. That is literally coming from large financial institutions. So take that into consideration. If we do see another market decline due to some type of lawsuit, due to some type of black swan event or a crash in a major project or a cryptocurrency exchange that none of us can predict, again, these financial institutions will most likely see that as an opportunity to enter into this digital asset space at a discount because they know where this is all headed long term. Here at CyperX, we will be doing the same exact thing. We will be taking advantage of any further discounted opportunities offered in this digital asset space. Again, it is not financial advice, but we know that the mainstream media will never show you the video clips that I just played for you all. Now, we also know that those individuals in the know understand that digital assets will power this new Web3 economy, this new internet that they are building. And so cryptocurrencies, because um, as we all know, um, cryptocurrencies, um, tokens actually, tokens are what drive the um, Web3 economies, um, they, they power up the web economies. So, and so that has led to a whole bunch of unintended consequences, um, which, which, which we obviously don't want to repeat if we're designing the internet of the future. And I see um, digital currencies as part of, part of that. And that cryptocurrency assets are not going away. We've heard systemically important individuals like the managing director of the IMF confirm that cryptocurrencies are not going away and financial institutions and market participants from distributed ledger technology and blockchain companies say the same exact thing. We must consider the effects if crypto assets become widespread. The scenario is not far-fledged. They may. For one, they are certainly not going away. Um, what was the strategy behind it and do you think does this provide Signum with a, a competitive advantage? I think it was always part of the reason to do this because we saw the ultimate conviction in the blockchain and how disruptive this is going to be to the financial world but also to many other aspects of life. Because we saw the ultimate conviction in the blockchain and how disruptive this is going to be to the financial world, but also to many other aspects of life. Decentralized applications to realize that overarching vision. That vision is going to be realized in every sector of, of the industry. I mean, what you hear about a lot is the finance sector, but it's much broader than that. It's going to be in finance, it's going to be in real estate, it's going to be in supply chain use cases, and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, every part of the internet, every sector of society is going to be affected by this technology and this model in this new version of the internet that's being created. And Hedera is one of those players. Fantastic. So Jan, back to you. Um, you know, Sugar Cantonal Bank has been around since 1896. So that's a long time, in 92. <laughs> um, and you know, you have your traditional offerings like mortgages, savings accounts, pension, um, and now you're adding Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Um, do you think, how does this affect your clients? And do you think, is this signaling to the market that mass adoption for cryptocurrencies is happening? They are here to stay. Um, how are the clients, well, it was client driven, right? The, the decision. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 at least we think that it's going to stay, right? I mean, that was the reason why we, why we launched this product. Where, where you and, and Broadbridge, are you seeing the move to DLT based platforms, okay? Yeah, I think it is. You know, it's funny because with sort of the implosion of the crypto market last year, I think the general public is sort of thinking like, oh, well, this stuff is going away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you talk to people in the know in financial services, it's like, no, it's not going away. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's very real. Uh, you know, for us. 
So just keep that in mind. If we do see a further market downturn or a further decline in the prices of these digital assets across the board, more so than where we're currently sitting at in the market right now, I personally will just be seeing that as an opportunity to get more of these digital assets while we still can, while institutions are still parked on the sidelines waiting for regulatory clarity. Now, all of those video clips out of the way, I just want to show you all some supportive fundamental documents shared with inside the private CyberX group that go on to reiterate the same exact sentiment that these panelists just presented to you all. So the first one is from Broadridge, okay? And we just heard the Broadridge CEO say that those in the know know that cryptocurrencies are not going away. So <clears throat> here you can see this is a document and this is a Broadridge document. It's labeled the next horizon and digital transformation, 2024 digital transformation and next gen technology study. You can see right here, they talk about us entering into a new level of market maturity. Now, right here, it goes on to say, in the next two years, the majority of respondents also expect to maintain or increase their investments in next gen technologies such as AI, quantum computing, crypto, digital assets, and blockchain. That is a massive statement coming from a large financial institution. We're going to head over here to another document shared with inside our private CyberX chat. This is actually from the Bank of International Settlements, where I went on to say, they are for a fact building out a new financial infrastructure. So remember, at the very beginning, Raul Paul went on to say, have a zoomed out long-term perspective. We have to understand what is happening behind the scenes. Here you can see them mention infrastructure. Go back on the CyberX platform and watch the infrastructure playlist if you haven't already to really understand how and what it is that they're building behind the scenes. But here is confirmation, not coming from CyberX. Again, I don't want anybody to think that this is a perspective that we have just out of the blue. We just woke up in the morning and we were like, oh yeah, we're just going to tell everybody they're building a new financial system. No, this is coming from the Central Bank of Central Banks, ladies and gentlemen. And here it goes on to say, central banks and the private sector, and we know Ripple started a collaboration, particularly in 2023 of August last year, Remember, just keep that in the back of your mind. I thought I'd throw that in there. But it says central banks and the private sector have both been actively involved in the provision of fast payments. In general, payment infrastructures like FPS require significant investment and coordination among stakeholders. Central banks, often in collaboration with the private sector, PSPs, can help overcome coordination problems associated with revamping of existing infrastructures or building new ones. Do you all see that right there? Okay. So this just goes to show that they are for a fact building out a new financial system, Web3, digital assets, distributed ledger, blockchain technology, crypto will all be an integral part of this new financial system. It is just going to take time, especially for these digital assets that actually have real world value and provide utility. Here is another very interesting document from the IDC. Okay, This is labeled Worldwide Blockchain Services 2024 IDC Marketscape. So over here, it goes on to say some key findings from this research of these professionals. Now, right down here, I want to take your attention. It says, digital assets are poised to revolutionize the world of finance. Blockchain is the foundation for cryptocurrencies, which are approved to be traded via ETFs by the SEC in the United States. So albeit, yes, there is a lot of speculation surrounding current and pending lawsuits and whatnot, but just keep in mind the long-term perspective of the digital asset space is to the upside, give or take some retracements while we go through the nascent and maturing stage of this digital asset landscape. Like I cannot stress enough, don't be fearful, be be proactive, engage yourself in research, research utility projects, research companies and organizations that are developing and building and growing during the current cycle that we're in, okay? Go research cryptocurrency companies, blockchain and distributed ledger technology protocols that are actually attempting to become regulatory compliant, right? So that way, when all these regulatory clampdowns come into fruition, all the crap coins go bye-bye and you're heavily invested or embedded, again, not financial advice, in digital assets that were compliant with regulations and that were looking to be on top of the game after regulations came into fruition. Again, not financial advice, just do your research. Now, here's another document. It goes on to say, I'm going to open this up. Frontiers in Environmental Science, original research. This is from the 12th of March, 2024. 
labeled Exploring the Structure of the Digital Economy Through Blockchain Tech and Mitigating Adverse Environmental Effects with the Aid of Artificial Networks. And here it says, the rapid transformation of economic and social systems worldwide through digital technologies present both unprecedented opportunities and challenges that require thoughtful navigation. Keep in mind, there are so many opportunities readily available at our fingertips as we speak right now in the market landscape that we operate in as manual retail investors. Over the past few decades, the digital transformation of economies and societies around the world has been unprecedented, and it will continue to revamp and drive momentum forward as time goes on. I cannot stress enough, you guys really got to wake up and do some research. There's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market right now. And if you just zoom out and you realize that none of the things I'm showing you right now make it to the mainstream, you'll start to realize that it's most likely to shake you out. All the information that's pumped out to the mainstream, like lawsuits, scams, all this stuff, it's all just to manipulate you all. Okay. They don't show you the ongoing developments behind the scenes and the positive information. This is from the European Commission. Okay. They are also talking about a digital transformation, right? We're right at the top. It says in parallel, digital networks are undergoing a transformation where connectivity infrastructure is converging with cloud and edge computing capabilities to harness the benefits of this transformation. The electronic communication sector needs to expand from the traditional consumer internet market towards digital services and key economic sectors. Remember I mentioned that they are building an, a new industrial complex, literally the internet of things. It says right here, such as the internet of things. This is another very interesting document that came out. This is straight from the IMF. Okay, remember, I just played a video clip of the managing director of the International Monetary Fund telling you all that crypto is not going away. This is a document from 2024 labeled Digital Money Cross-Border Payments, International Reserves, and the Global Financial Safety Net. You can see right here, it confirms we are in the midst of a digital revolution. Can't make it any more clear than that right there. It says right here, Together with the emergence of distributed ledger technology, we have spurred the development and proliferation of new forms of digital money and assets, i.e. DM, both private and public, including central bank digital currencies, e-money, and crypto assets, such as global stable coins, as well as security and utility tokens. Stable coins, and to some extent, other crypto assets with their underlying transaction technology have the potential for wider usage by households and firms as a means of payment, right? Do y'all remember what Nelly Lang said Back in, I believe, at the beginning of 2023 at a BIS summit. But since we think the future value of crypto is for payments and not for speculative trading, the natural connection on... Right now, digital assets are utilized for speculative trading. In the future, they see them being utilized for payments. Here is a supporting document, not only... Are they telling you this in panel discussions, but they're also telling you this in updated documents. Last but not least, we have this survey that took place. The latest ATO stats reveal a striking contrast in crypto investments among SMSF investors. The SMSF portfolios of high net worth holders, $50 million plus, have on average 500% more crypto than those of the affluent sector of 200K to $5 million ranges. What does the Australia's super rich know that the rest of the world does not? Do you all see that right there? That is insane. 500% of high net worth investors hold 500% more crypto as a percentage of their SMSF portfolio. So with all of these things in mind, Take this information into consideration, considering the ongoing developments and the slight pullback that we've most recently seen in the digital asset space. Know that here at CypherX, if we see a further decline in the prices of digital assets, a further risk off market mood, we will be taking advantage of those opportunities by understanding the zoomed out perspective and where this digital asset space is headed long term. Investing in utility, researching projects that have potential longevity, again, not financial advice. Personally, here at CyperX, we don't dabble in or invest in meme coins. Teach his own. Obviously, of course, people like to chase gains. Here at CyperX, we're invested in this space for the long run. 
as always, bringing you guys the realest information. Hopefully this gave you guys some insights into actual ongoing developments and industry leading perspectives from some systemically important organizations, large financial institutions, and other major players in the space that will never make the mainstream. If you all enjoyed this video breakdown, do us a favor, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the platform and I will see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.